kweli mimi mimi nitoka jeli jeli and unajua ni ghetto how it's rough and everything tears of the sun was my biggest movie that's how we bought this house that we are in these guys one thing out of my mouth and the accent was like hey how are you doing oh my god they they just they want nothing to do with me about like what and making big money and I'm a nobody never been in so i was like how much is bruce willis get if this is what i'm getting and then the first showing of that movie the first weekend they made nine, nine million dollars they were like wait a minute Welcome ladies and gentlemen to Kenya Marekani. This is a platform where we feature I mean Kenyans here in America more specifically and who are doing extraordinary. And Maze today we are blessed. We have greatness in the house. I'm telling you anything that happens in America you have to see it on Kenya Marekani and uh, Maze today we are blessed. We have one of the greatest greatest actors from Kenya bana eh now in all the way in Hollywood maze anapeperusha bendera ya Kenya juu kwa juu maze none other than uh, Benji na nakwambia nitakuwa nitakuwa mnamuona hapa soon so if you're new here please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel because we will be bringing a lot of people and ina ku motivate ina ku educate uh, and then we continue to build our own stories because we can only tell our story the best way Yeah so without any further ado before we do that before we come him uh this is how you subscribe to our youtube channel So ladies and gentlemen the moment we've been waiting our guest is here with us namuona so karibu sana bana bro Hey Santi Jerry. <laughs> yeah 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 Maze. I'm I'm glad you're doing this Maze. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even know it existed until we were here today. So I'm going to be watching it every day so, so. Hey, This is great. Awesome. Yeah, we highlight Kenyans uh, mm. doing different things here in the US. Yeah. Uh, as in you've always been in my mind and more specifically when we met at the airport just randomly like I enter Hollywood and how do I know <laughs> I'm in Hollywood until I may I meet Benjamin Mwenyewe <laughs> <laughs> Yeah that was that was amazing your daughter I mean your your wife and daughter were they were, they were great you know the, it was very warm and everything it was it was a good meeting that day yeah so but by, by the way it's my wife my wife introduced me to the movie that you 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 starred you know Oh It's which one? How, the the uh, what is it called the uh, beautifully God broken? Dead. Oh God's not dead. Okay. God, God's okay. not dead. Yeah yeah so we watched all the series of that oh, wow. show wow. and uh hi Maze it's amazing now that we get to meet on our platform. Thank you so much for accepting the call. You're welcome. You're welcome. Asante sana. So first things first let's uh, get an an introduction because I cannot introduce you better than you can do. So uh just for our guests to understand who we have here uh, i'll give you this opportunity to just introduce yourself okay <clears throat> my names you know semanga kunyeti kwa majina mimi naitwa benjamin i love that when i see that in kenya and uh, yeah i'm an actor here i came here a lot of, uh, before probably jerry before you were born i came here uh, 35 years ago Uh, in 1987 is when I came and uh, to go to school and when I finished that I was like okay my dad your degree ndio you yenu sasa mimi naenda Hollywood so I went to Hollywood and started everything that you you just kind of touched on you know just do movies and stuff so that's that's you know me in a nutshell <clears throat> wow 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 yani how did it How did this journey first of all start? Unajua umetoka mtaani umetoka wapi? Eh. Jerry. Okay, I see. Right. Yeah, you yeah, are, you yeah. You want me to talk about all that? Okay, so yeah. mimi tumo kweli mimi mimi nitoka Jerry. Uh, Jerry and unajua ni ghetto how it's rough and everything and all that. So sometimes more, most people want to say, "Hey, mazim to Jerry, I tell me if Hollywood." Ah, watch up. Yes. Nitoka Jerry uh, from humble beginnings. Seen what well Buddha kona akona pesa and all it was it was rough for us you know seven boys uh, no girl seven boys uh mother to never worked she was yeah likoni uh, just a house housewife Buddha got from a BAT so so you can imagine wavulana one wasaba you know to this poor mom and especially Mimi the second born I was really really bad So Buddha when in 77 kwenye CPE I didn't do that great akasema hapana huyu tunampeleka ushago huyu 
nikapeleka <laughs> ocha nikaenda shule kufanya nini then nikapass vizuri alafu kwa sababu I was getting into gangster stuff and everything to cry so unajua ile influence too ya watoto you doing crazy things you do all that stuff so aliponipeleka ocha nikapass alafu tena nikarudi sasa uh, Jerry, secondary school kamaliza nilipofaliza all levels buda kaniingiza kwa BAT the same place what so i was i worked there for like seven years niligundua nilisikia ati in after seven years you need you can get your pension whatever you get yako mkuki save company pia nakupatia yao so i waited until nimefika hiyo seven years nilika nikapata hizo do alafu nikaenda USIU uh nikaanza USIU USIU nikaon ah mzee si niende America bwana a boys USIU is a ziko nne campuses nne hiyo ya yeah. USIU Nairobi then kuna moja London kuna moja Mexico and then kuna hiyo in San Diego USA so nika nika i then i decided to uh ama i should speak only in, in english ama naweza switch up You, you you can switch but i think because this uh, mostly interviews english. yeah mostly english because your yeah. story is international we want uh, uh, everybody to understand what you're saying okay cool yeah. so 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 when i got to usiu uh, in nairobi i transferred to usiu san diego and that's how my journey to the united states started and uh, but when i went to usiu i was doing mit um, uh, but when i got to san diego they didn't have that So I'm like man I want to do computers what is what is it so I decided to uh, to to relocate uh, not relocate uh, apply to other schools so I applied to so many schools California state universities they were the cheaper one than the other the the cal, cal, I don't know what it's called I forgot I'm blanking out but anyway so I did and uh, the first school to uh, to reply to my thing was Cal- California State University Stanislaw and I just took off boom the next day I was there so that has been my journey how I started and everything and then you know after working there you know I graduated then I decided I'm going to uh, go and do something that I love I just wanted to be the first person ever in my in my uh, family lineage to go to to university because there was none my dad never did mom wow. never did mm. so my brothers never did everybody so so that's why i did this and when i achieved that goal so i wanted now to achieve my own dream and that was to work in the entertainment industry either as a musician or a movie guy so i went to hollywood and here i am wow wow uh let me bring you back a little bit because a lot of uh people from uh, africa are migrating to the us and it's not easy to even mm-hmm. uh just merge into being an american how was it when you first landed in america oh man it was like <laughs> it was it was crazy because <clears throat> i was like okay you know when you're in when you're in nairobi you're like yeah i'm gonna be speaking like the you know the, the <laughs> black americans you know that's what they said they, they we, we used to say that wow. yeah yeah shock of all shocks i came out here man the first thing out of my mouth okay at least for this experience i can't i can't say that all the black americans are like that no but my experience that particular day at usiu oh yeah. no uh with these guys was it at usiu the, i think when i'd already uh transferred to cal to to see it to stanislaus these guys one thing out of my mouth and the accent was like hey what are you doing oh my god they they just they want nothing to do with me about like what and yet the whites were like oh i like the way you roll your arms so do you need any i'm like it was weird man it was it's like racism the first day i didn't get it you know it, it didn't make any sense so mm-hmm. i've always had this thing you know not against them or anything because i wasn't brought up that way but that shocked me that i thought that people who look like me would embrace me more more than yeah. the white people would and they, it was just the opposite it was like wow i was shocked So, so 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 later on did you ever did they, like your mind in your mind did they, that change like you now oh, of course of course because i'm not that kind of person i'm a christian yeah. first of all yeah. so i just noticed that wow so it can be like that but i just let it go and 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 my next uh, thing with racism mm-hmm. didn't happen in the hands of a black person no it would happen to the hands of a of a white guy the police officer was he was a married guy i believe he had a ring whatever in his hand finger and he was uh, he was uh, having what they call a ride along at least i heard that 
term for the first time when he told it to me. He was with some chick, a young girl, in the car, and he pulled me over. And, you know, it's a cow town. Over at Turlock is a small yeah, cow town. Yeah. There's a lot of prejudice and all that stuff. So this guy pulled, pulled me over. And, and the girl is laughing, laughing. I'm like, what did I do? I didn't do anything. I was just doing the speed limit and all that. I said, oh, no, whatever. I don't know what he said. And, for, and then I asked him, first of all, who is that girl? with you, why is she laughing like that when, when you're giving me a ticket? I don't understand it. So that's a ride along. So you need it. Anyways, so I decided I was gonna fight this ticket. Mm -hmm. So I fought it, went to the judge. The judge said, okay, because it's your word against an officer, we, I'm sorry, we're gonna take the officer's side. Boom, $100, I had to pay the whatever, and that was it. And that was, a, that was okay, I wasn't too bad. Mm -hmm. The second time was now I was working at Round, at round Table Pizza as a cook when I was now going to school. I think it was my sec my first year, first year uh, at Cal State Stanislaus. I'm working as a cook. And then these prejudiced guys come in at night. We had the round table pizza. We had the back room had, a, we had a, 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 a big TV. So the Lakers were playing that day. So every time I would put the pizzas in the oven, I would run back there and watch the game, watch the game, and then come back and, you know, do my thing. That day, as I was passing there, there was a there was a family there of cowboys, a husband, a wife, and a son. And they had their cowboy hats and all that stuff. So so later I didn't think anything of it. Me, I'm just I'm working here. I'm going over there to watch TV and I'm coming back. So he sent his son to tell the receptionist to call me. Mm -hmm. So the receptionist uh, called me and said, Hey Benji, this guy wants to talk to you. And then I go in, and I'm carrying a big old knife in my hand, the, the pizza chopping knife. So uh, he says, oh, you see that table over there? Uh, uh, we don't want you passing by that table while we are here. And I'm like, what is he talking about? At first I didn't understand, and he was also scared. So he was kind of mumbling, you know? He was a young guy, he was probably 16, but very tall. He was taller than him, he was like 6'4". His dad was like 6'7". So he said, you see that table over there? We don't want you passing by that table while we are here. I said, what do you mean? I work here. I'm going to pass it by that table anytime I want to. So the father heard me and him now arguing back and forth. So he came and walked to me and he gave, and he said, hey, you yeah, nigga, this, F you this, and F you that. And oh my God, I was shaking. I didn't know what to do. I'm thinking, I am five days. I think it was, yeah, I, I hadn't even been in the set for a long time, man. It was like, a month or so. So if I kill this guy, they're going to put me in jail, in prison, and then Forever. deport me or something like that. You know, I was, and nobody was helping me. So Chicken, who is the uh, person in charge, we call the PIC, person in charge. Chicken, a small little girl, is the one now who pushed this guy out. Yeah, you got to go, you got to go. And he's like, I think they had already eaten. So they wanted to do this thing after they had already, you know, they, they had had their fail and stuff. And so they walked out, still calling me. F this and nigga that and oh man, dude, I was I was I I couldn't work that. Wow. it was wow. the most horrible thing that ever happened. And that's the craziest it's had been to me for racism, and it's never happened again. I mean, like like that. Now I have I have a, a thing on my wall here, the Modesto B. That story is in there. <laughs> I, if I can put it up here and watch, you see it, you know, if, you know, but it's, it's not necessary. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so it's been otherwise, you know, other than little racism here and there and all that kind of stuff, you know, I think, I think my ride's been good. My wow. Been good. wow. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about acting. When did you realize that you brother, you act, yeah? <laughs> you finished your college degree and told, told your parents, there you go. Now that's let your me, degree. Yeah. Let me follow my passion. How was okay. that? Okay. This is the okay. This is what I I was at Jericho Baptist Church. I was I used to write little plays, mm -hmm. and then we would act them out, and uh, and that's the only acting thing I've ever done in Nairobi. Just little plays for the church, you know, church the youth, for the youth in the church, and then we would uh, you know have that and act them out, and I also had a band with my brothers and Bruce of the Umbo, God rest his soul. Yes, yes, I, 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 I met yeah. him. In the, yeah. yeah, so, and uh, he was also in that band before he moved on to other, other things. But before that, we had a band called Fireplace. We were the only rock band in Nairobi at that time, back, back in the day when we were young. So, so when I came to the United States, I decided, you know, 
after I graduated, I decided I was going to do the things that I used to do, that I mm. love to do, which is yeah. music and acting. So as soon as I told my, my, my mom, there's your degree, I took my car and drove six hours. I left my wife, Elizabeth, and, and daughter Ida uh, in Turlock, and I drove by myself to, to find a place to live and everything. So Liz would be paying the... the, the so I went, found a place in Hollywood. I stayed in Hollywood, found a place, and uh, and then um, no. First of all, I didn't find a place. I found some guys who are uh, who who's this? They're family friends of ours. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, one of the daughters is called Basala. It's the only one I can remember right now. I'm blanking out. So I lived with them while I was looking for a place for for myself. Mm -hmm. And then I, when I was walking down the streets, I saw music magazine it's a it's uh just on the stand i'm like wait so i bought it and i looked it's, i think it was it wasn't it was free i think it was free i don't think you bought it or anything it, it was just free yeah. so i took it and looked inside and there was a band called the passing they were looking for a bass player so i made i made that call and they auditioned me and i got in and wow okay so there was a guy the place that we used to rehearse that guy was the manager of that whole complex. So he got me one room, a studio that was empty, no, but there was nobody there. And then that's when I moved now from Salas place to my to my own place. And then so Liz was would be paying that rent while I'm still looking for jobs and all that stuff and everything. Yeah. Because she had a she's had a full time job in Turlock. So wow. that's how it started for me. And then I went to Hollywood somewhere, still in the streets. They had all these numbers said, okay, for extras, you know, call this number. So I told one of them and I called it. It turned out to be central casting. And um, that's how I got in, but as an extra guy. Mm -hmm. So so I, I did the extra thing for a long time. Now I've got, I've got money and everything. I'm, I'm, I'm doing kind of okay. And um, so, so, uh, yeah, so that's how it started. And I did every day, every day, every day. I, 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 will go, I went to these things. I would tell them I speak Swahili. I speak Swahili. It never worked for me. I always tell this story. I don't know why I always tell this story. Everybody, probably people are now bored of hearing <laughs> no, this story. There, there are always new people who listen to you. Like, I've never heard this story. So oh, tell okay. us, brother. So there we go. Yeah, so I, used, I would tell them I speak Swahili. I speak Swahili every single time. I speak Swahili. It never worked. 20th time, it didn't. 21st, no, 30th, it didn't. 40th, it didn't. 50th, it didn't. But I think on the 55th time, it worked. I was on the I was on the set of the X Files. I was the I was there as a you know just another extra guy. Then I told the the first AD that I spoke Swahili, and she didn't even look at. She just passed. I went on her way. I was like, wow. <laughs> this is crazy you yeah. know and then but then 10 minutes later she came benjamin benjamin i'm like whoa man i was so scared i thought i'd done something wrong i was like, I was like why did i open my big mouth now i'm gonna be thrown off the set and all that stuff then she's like did you say you speak swahili i said yes yeah. i do okay could you teach some of the the the, the, the cast members how to say some words in swahili i said mm -hmm. yes wow so here I was, an extra. Guess what they did? They bumped me because now I'll be speaking words now. Yeah, just, yeah. Yeah. So they bumped me from an extra to uh, 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 a speaking role person, they, a principal. That's what they call mm. principal. Yeah, yeah. So the next day, I say, I had. <laughs> I got there, I've seen a, a trailer mm -hmm. with my name on it Benjamin Ochi. Wow, and I was wow, called Ochi wow, and those guys. Wow. But I'm like, what? Wow, but I didn't use it at you. I'm now chilling. I'm now a big guy because I'd already bonded with all these extras. They were my friends and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah. So I would just go in there to change, and then I would come outside. Man, it was crazy for three days. Man, I I enjoyed working in the on the X Files, and that was my first speaking role. And that's how I joined the union because they Taft Hartley. They did something called Taft Hartley. Taft Hartley. They force you to be. They 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 force the the because they are using a person who is not in the union they have to taft hurt you now to make you in the union so the next union job you are a must pay you have to pay them to join 
Wow. wow. So that's how I, got, I joined the union, man. It was, uh, at first I was struggling to get vouchers. If those days it was two union vouchers. If you get two union vouchers, you get, you're eligible to join the union. I only had one, man, after 50, 60 movies. I was trying so hard. This Swahili angle helped me and I got it, man. It was amazing. Wow. So, yeah. Wow. So, so this Swahili small language back mm -hmm. home saved your life. Saved my life because you know back in the day they used to any movie that's sort of African Swahili, whether it's Uganda, whether it's I don't know from South Africa, Swahili was the was the language they used in the movies every time back in the day. Nowadays they've changed it. If you're in South Africa, you're speaking uh whatever Zulu, they will have Zulu people in there. If you're speaking Lua or whatever, they have Lua people in there. So they've changed it. But yeah. before it used to be Swahili, so that's how that was my saving grace. Right wow! wow. And when was your like your big breakthrough now in, in these uh, movie scenarios? It was the next job. <clears throat> the next job was now Tears of the Sun, a big movie with Bruce Willis. So, so I took. I I wasn't even going for it. I was taking my kid. I was taking Ida, who was seventeen at that time, and Mary, who was minus ten, seven. Okay, so to audition for these for these the for tears of the sun so as they were auditioning me i went my way and i was waiting whatever and when i came back i found mary was outside with the casting director casting director was taking a smoke break and mary was playing around over there and the casting director tells me oh your daughter says that you are an actor too uh i said yes i do have uh, what have you done well i have done a lot of uh movies as but as tv whatever but as an extra except mm -hmm. last month yeah is when i got on the i forgot my first speaking role on the x files so she said mm, okay so would you like to read for a role for me i said oh sure of course imagine my daughter was my agent seven years old so wow. i read for the i read for that role and i got it First of all, Ida also got it. Ida got it. My daughter, who also went, she didn't get it. She didn't. Uh, my, the, the little daughter didn't get it, but Ida got it. Ida went first to, uh, when we got home, you know, a week later, it's like, oh, Ida, there's Ida in the limo, man. I'm, I'm, I didn't get it, so I'm feeling bad, but I'm feeling good for my daughter at the same time. So I'm filming. She's riding in a limo, going to the airport to go to Hawaii to shoot Tears of the Sun. Yeah. Then a week later, it was me. Same thing. I was like, all right, I, finally, I got it then after all. So you, so Tears of the Sun was my biggest movie. That's how we bought this house that we are in. Wow. It was a lot of money, money, more money than I've ever seen in my life. Here I am. I am a nobody making 10 grand a week for five months. And I'm like, what the heck just happened here? You know? So I was able to, for five, five months, I've never been in a movie where I was there for five months. Never. God's Not Dead was all a month, a month, a month, a month. This tears of sound was five months and making big money. And I'm a nobody, never been in. So I was like, how much is Bruce Willis getting if this is what I'm getting? The weird thing is that, <clears throat> yeah, anyway, so let's not even talk about money. It, it, was, it was good. So that's how we are in this house now because uh, because of Tears of the Sun. That was my biggest break. And then the thing, the good, the one thing with movies is that when you do one big one. When was this? When was this? 20, 20, 2000. 2000. Yeah. That's 20 years ago. And it's hey, still brother. making money. It's still, I'm still making money from it because every time it shows on. Uh, that's the good thing about joining the union. Mm -hmm. If you're not in the union, you're not going to make anything. Yeah. But because I'm in the union, you make money. Every movie that comes out, let me just mm -hmm. tell you one thing, the good thing about being in the union. Every yeah. movie that comes out, you'll make at least 10 grand, the first residual that comes. It's a year later. You've been paid to work. Yeah. And then the residuals are the ones that are coming now. These are residuals of, of money earned from uh, people, uh, Netflix, people uh, renting, people, uh, platforms on the internet and all that stuff. Yeah. At least ten thousand dollars. So my first, so imagine me after I'd gotten all that money, I bought a house, I'm chilling. A year later, I get a check for 10 grand. I'm like, wait, what is this? I'm looking, oh residuals. What is residuals? 
Then I'm like, oh, okay, that's just with this and that, whatever. And then they start going down, though. 10,000, then the next one is 8,000, the next one is 6,000, the next one is 5,000, the next one is 4,000, the next one is 3,000. It's going down. 2,000, 1,000. And now it's stuck at 150. That's mm. about half. In my, 20 years later, you're still making like 150 bucks. It's like, wow. It's it's a good it's a good place to be, but you need to do good, big movies. If you do big movies, you're going to enjoy. Wow. But yeah, but they don't come all the time so yeah Tears of the sun was great for me uh, uh god's not dead the first one did well we didn't even know it was going to be that big god's not dead was going straight to the as far as the producers were concerned it was going straight to dvd mm-hmm. now guess what happened this movie was one million dollar budget the budget the entire movie the budget. entire movie they, yeah. everybody was one million bucks and then the first showing of that movie, the first weekend, they made $9, 000, $9 million. They were like, wait a minute. I think we got something here. Yeah. And they had already put it only to 700 theaters worldwide. I mean, nationwide, 700. When they made $9 million that weekend, they opened it up nationwide to 2,500. And of course, it did what it did. 100 million something like that i think it did well so then they started the sequels mm-hmm. not two, not yeah three and I've, I've been in four i don't think i'll be in five because i died in three they brought me back in four but um, i think i'm done with god's not dead yeah. wow 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 hey, 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 hey. you've been this yani the the process does not come very quick you have to oh, wait no Oh no, oh no. Unfortunately, that's what happens. Because even for me, after Tears of the Sun, now people were looking for me. But me, mm-hmm. I don't have an agent. I didn't have an agent. I didn't have nobody. So they were looking for me and I didn't know that. So finally I asked my 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 daughter's agents if I could if they ma- the managers if they could manage me. So they agreed, and then that's how I said, you know, uh auditioning for speaking roles stuff and all that stuff but the problem is if you don't get one immediately mm-hmm. you're just gonna fade out and that's yeah. what happened to me that's yeah. what happened to me i faded in there for a while and that was nothing and then all of a sudden then then when god's not dead, I, then i did other little small things and then god's not dead brought me back up again yeah. uh, what is your secret now to stay up uh, afloat because you have to hey. still stay on top yeah Yes, you, you got to be busy. You got to also do your own things. Because mm-hmm. uh, sometimes, let's say, okay, because I, I, I've i been a writer now. I've been I've written some shows. I uh, One of them is dysfunctionally organized. Dysfunctionally, there's no such a word. You add a Y at the end of it. That yeah. Dysfunctionally organized. It's about uh, kids with special needs and all that stuff. Uh, yeah, people with special needs. So because I was a special needs teacher for a long time and I wanted to do something that elevates them that puts mm-hmm. them in, in good light because most yeah. people kind of ostracize and that we feel you're a special need person or you don't know this and that no so untrue so i did dysfunctionally organized i wrote that and my friend nemo directed it so the, i did only three episodes and then i ran out of money but that's the way to stay relevant either mm-hmm. write stuff your own things and shoot it. yeah so uh, so that's what i've been and that's how i, I also wrote the wives in kenya Mm-hmm. And it was taken by KBC. I wrote a whole episode, uh, 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 a whole season of uh, The Wives. It's called The Wives. I wrote that, yeah. directed it, and, mm-hmm. and also acted in it. And we did it in Kenya three years. I think it was three years ago. And now I've, I've done this op- uh, season two, which I'm hoping to shoot in Kenya this year, uh, around December, around there. Something. wow wow i like the fact that uh, you're still connected back home you know most people when they get your hate mm. they like ah what but oh, um, no. I, 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 I am so pro kenya man i'm so pro home i love it i and uh if i can you know uh yeah i'm i'm all about that in fact the last movie i did was a lua movie Mm-hmm. That's my first ever Lua movie. I'm speaking in Lua. I'm like, because some people always laugh at me. You are a Lua, but you're speaking in Lua with an accent. I'm like, what do you mean with an accent? Me, what, what do you mean? I don't get it. According to them, I'm speaking with an accent. In a Lua with an accent. So we did this movie, Where the River Divides. 
Mm-hmm. It's a short film we did in Thimlich Ohinga in, uh, when was it? Uh, like five months ago in Kenya. And that movie, I'm telling you, that one, yeah. Yeah. I think it was, it's going to open up some crazy doors that nobody ever expected. I'm serious. So we'll see. It's, 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 it's being launched in Kenya in August. Mm-hmm. And then we'll see what happens. Wow. Wow. Mm. What are some of the uh, challenges uh, doing all this? Um, especially because now you are like a household name, both in Africa and here in the US. People, I mean, I mean, what are some of the challenges being there? Uh, for me, I think it's just kupenya properly and you just penetrate this thing completely so that you're now you can get work easily because mm-hmm. i'm still okay that all the stuff you've said is cool is it's and it's true but sometimes mm-hmm. the jobs are like you know they're not coming as much as i thought they should come you yeah. know what i mean yeah. yeah so so that's kind of the challenge and also getting things that you want to do because there's certain things i would never do i would never play a gay guy where especially where i'm going to kiss a guy another guy that one i will not but that's where i draw the line i'm sorry i have nothing against them uh, the, the actually gay guys are my friends my neighbors are gay best the, the best people actually by the way they're very nice they're very they're they're, they're not hardy people they're very happy and all that but I, that's just not what i would do it's not me i wouldn't do it so 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 i just want people to understand that i didn't bash anybody i just said no it's just a role i would never do <clears throat> Mm. yeah that's it i i think brings me to my next question you are a very strong christian and uh yeah. how does that play w- w- with you being in hollywood because sometimes hollywood you you have to be out like very like outgoing to be yes. even a star you know yes. how how have you kept yourself uh like <laughs> guarded you know and it's, still stand out it's not been easy because when you're in the limelight and especially okay you're a christian and also you're married and all that stuff but then there's a lot of temptations out there especially when you're on the set and all that stuff there's always the girls you know, the women the beautiful women this this one all. so it's a very tough whatever to be but if you if you stay true to whatever because you know the the, the, the bible is there for a reason mm-hmm. to correct us yeah the, the, the conscience the, the holy spirit is that it's a conscious thing it's like hey dude Alcohol and everybody. I yeah, don't yeah. think you should be. But if you are not a Christian, then you wouldn't even think about that. You would just do these things. You know what I mean? So for me, the Christianity has curbed all the all the crazy things I would ever have done. It's mm-hmm. helped me uh, uh, jump over those hurdles. Yeah. Do you think sometimes uh, your faith will make you not get more gigs, especially in Hollywood? Yes, sometimes, but nowadays, you know, things are kind of changed. Yeah. There's a, a, a lot, there are a lot of faith, faith-based movies mm-hmm. that are coming up, especially uh, God's Not Dead kind of, no, this was not the first one. There was like, it kind of pushed, propelled things that way. Yeah. And ever since I've done, uh, Beautifully Broken is another Christian movie that I did. Mm-hmm. And this, I was so sure, oh my God, I was sure this one, was the one that was going to take me over over that whatever but they took the kind of um i think the distribution that they chose the distribution where they chose was not good for uh beautifully broken mm-hmm. so things kind of went down a little bit and but it's a great movie yeah. people should watch that it's a true story i played a guy who is real a real mm-hmm. person and uh it was just amazing it wow amazing. yeah wow wow that's amazing uh i know uh i there's so many people who look up to you and uh by the way before i even ask this you are also into music bana i've seen your background guitars you teach music yeah. bro you t- touch a little bit about that as well see, see i'm in the booth right now whatever if <laughs> <laughs> yeah music has always been my thing so <clears throat> Like I told you when I was in growing up, we were like the first rock band in Nairobi. I don't even think there's a rock band there today, mm. 20 something years later. Is it 20? No, 40. Uh-huh. 40 something years they, 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 used to be, they, they used to be a, a band, a rock band, which is called Rock of Ages. Uh, For real? Was, yeah, yeah they, it, was, it was a huge band. 
Nice. Rock of Ages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. They I'd played maybe look in, the, in the 2006, they're about to 2010. Mm. Rock of yeah. Ages was a, was a huge band. Yeah. They played in so many gigs. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. yeah I was so not there I, during your time. Yeah, so I've done, uh, music is always, has always been my thing. I, I had a big, I had a studio here in the house. I had the, I had all the gear and everything. Okay, I sold that and I have a smaller package now, but I'm still doing music. I'm a recording engineer. I recorded my kids. Ida, Ida, I think you know her by then. She was called Ida Onyango way back then. Yeah. Uh, yeah, before she got married uh, to Lovi and um, Lovi Longomba. So, so before that, I was, I was her engineer for the longest time. We even came to Nairobi where she won the, Boomba Female Awards uh, uh, for her song, Don't Stop. And uh, during that time when Lovi, the Longombas were the, yeah, the, the Longomba. biggest name in the, the, yeah. during that time, that's when Ida was there. I know. Yeah, oh, they were huge, man. Those guys. I know, I know. So Ida got one and the, the Longomba swept like six. Six, man. It was like, wow, amazing. So anyway, you're asking me about music. So yes, yeah. I do that. I'm a recording engineer. And I... Uh, I um, I recorded Ida, and then when the kids, Mary and Eva, they grew when they were like eight and five, no, maybe nine and seven, nine minus three is what, six, nine and six. I They also started a rock band that I'm the one who made all the songs that they have, they did, and uh, they were called EME Angels, mm -hmm. and we did that. And so now they kind of stopped, they singing for the church, uh, Mary sings at, at Revelation Church, that's, uh, that's the church that Prophet Lovi uh, runs. That's Mary is one of the singers over there. And Eva is one of the, she's the media people, one of the media people over there. And I'm, me, I'm just a congregant. And- uh, Oh, you so, also fellowship in the same church? Yeah, I, I, I yes, I, I do. <clears throat> me, yeah, so that's where we go. And I, um, what do you call this thing? So I have a studio here. I do my own things. You can, if, Everybody check me out, Benji Bendrix on YouTube. You'll see all my songs that I've ever done. They're on there. So music wow. has always been, my, music is my number one love. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, I think we just lost Benji. I think somebody's calling him. No, I already cut it off. I already oh, okay. It off. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, welcome back. Yeah, sorry. Sorry about that. I should have, I should have... Uh, then the no disturb thing, but I forgot to do that. Yeah, no, no problem. We're almost done. Groups. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Wow. Thank you so much for uh, host, uh, just accepting to come to our show. What is uh, some of the things you would like to tell uh, Africans coming from Africa who wants to like do uh, become actors uh, or musicians just in the creative field? There are, what I can tell them is that this place is amazing for that kind of stuff. This is like the, the hub of all entertainment. So the, the, the resources are there and uh, all, sorts of the, all sorts of stuff. Whatever you want will be there. Mm -hmm. You'll find the best of the best in those areas, entertainment, this, this is the place. So when you come, you can't just be, you know, wishy-washy and all that stuff. You gotta be also, you gotta bring your A game is the only way you're going to be able to survive in this place. Yeah. Because the resources are there to support you. But if you don't work hard yourself, then of course it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Thank you so much. Uh, what is your parting shot before we end this show? Uh, people just work hard out there. It's not easy in the entertainment industry. There's a lot of, pre some, there's sometimes prejudice is what brings other people down. So, when you when you decide to be in the entertainment industry, you have to have a thick skin. Know that there will be no's. You'll be you'll get so many no's, so many no's. You will not believe it. Uh, but if you keep going, if you know that that is your calling, entertainment, then just take the no's, shake yourself, and keep going. Mm, wow! 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 Last but not least, where can guys find you? All your platforms. I uh, believe uh, on Facebook is Benjamin A. Onyango. Uh, Twitter is things, I think it's B, at B. Ochieng, O-C-H-I-E-N-G, B. Ochieng. What's the other one? IG 
is Benji Bendrix. And uh, TikTok is Benji Bendrix. Wow. That's amazing. The way you've mentioned them, I, I, I see you're not active on those platforms. <laughs> 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 I caught you there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> yeah. You better be active in those platforms. Eh? Because, no, uh, I am now. I never used to be. I was, I was out of Facebook, actually all social media for the last three years. Uh, I just came back, but now I'm I'm going I'm going hard now. I'm not I'm not. Yeah, social media it. now is now brings the globe together. Yeah, exactly. And you, can, yeah. you can do your stuff there without even like waiting to go for a show. You can be doing stuff over there, and they also bring some little remuneration here and there. Yeah. You know. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Wow, Benja, Maze, yeah. I appreciate you and your time. I know in your busy schedule, you set aside uh, these few minutes so that we can talk. We, I, we can't finish your story, but uh, mm -hmm. definitely from just what we've talked, mm -hmm. people will be inspired. And I know also you will connect back to home. A lot of people will be watching this. Maze, thank you so much. We appreciate you. Thank you Asante, so much. Asante, thank you uh, um, for having me. Yes. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm humbled. Thank Asante. you very much. Yeah. So you can think about me and then reach out to me to do this. I, I, yes. I, I, yeah. But by the way, before, before you end, Nikiwa mm. Hollywood and Leona Watu wanna strike. What are they striking about, Bana? Oh, so that's a writer's strike. Uh -huh. Because of AI, ah. artificial intelligence. It's taking over everything. It's the people are going to be losing jobs and all that. So that's why the writers are striking. And there's Funun right now that. Uh, after June 30th, that's what, in five days, six days, something like that, the actors also, the SAG, it's going to join that picket line. So, mm -hmm. so they are, you know, they kind of, it is a little bit crazy. Yeah. Been for a while. So, yeah. Hey, hey, hey. so I think we'll capture you in the next time when you, your show launches in Kenya. Yeah, let's come to this platform, talk about your stuff that you'll be doing. The next few years what you uh do uh, i mean doing in kenya and uh mm. so that guys can connect and see you in the next uh episode what you'll be doing all right thanks jerry Asante, Asante. Asante. god bless you god bless right. you, god bless you too. cheers cheers right. cheers Maze, thank you so much ladies and gentlemen that was our time today if you're new here consider subscribing and uh let's keep blessing if you have a story bring it to us uh if you have anything you want to advertise also talk to us and uh we keep blessing each other, you know, and uh, highlighting our own stories. And God bless you. So thank you so much. I have nothing else to continue saying, but God bless you. <laughs>